Okay, I've got another repair video I'd like to show everyone. This is an Xbox One S, which I believe has a bad power supply. You can see I've already opened up the Xbox and taken out the power supply, and I've got the AC lead coming here on the right, and I've got the DC lead um, coming in and going to the uh, system board connector here. This is the DC input. Uh, I believe the three grey leads are plus 12 volts and the three black leads are the uh, ground leads but I'll go back to that later. I just wanted to show you when you push the power button what happens. So it beeps and then flashes on and then suddenly it's just gone off again. I'll do that just once more. There's a little bit of fan spin so it is getting some power but let's just do that once more. I'm not sure if you can hear but there's this kind of fizzle sound. Now I can't, it won't even power on at all. No that's not powering on. Ah there it is. You might have heard that, it's a little fizzle sound. So we've got power again but it's like intermittent power. Yeah and it just shuts down. Now usually if you get a uh, power problem with the Xbox One S or the Xbox One X. It will be a problem with the system board. There's a problem with the power supply on the system board itself, not the actual power supply brick here. But in this case, I know this is a working Xbox One S, so I've isolated it to the power supply. Uh, so what I want to do now is just have a quick look at the power supply input. This is the first thing you should do. You should check this should be reading 12 volts. As I said before, you've got three grey leads which provide the plus 12 volts and then you've got the three black leads on the other side which uh, should be the ground. You just need to get a multimeter and put this on DC voltage and if I just put the probe, the red probe, on the right side you've got the grey leads which should read 12 volts and then the ground lead here. So you can see here everything appears to be okay. You've got 11.97 volts which is close enough to 12 volts. So ordinarily you'd think this is not a power supply problem. But this Xbox One S is working perfectly fine so I do know that this is a power supply problem. What I'm going to do next is op open the power supply up a look at some of the capacitors and some of the other components and see what's going on there. Right, okay, we're back again. Yeah, just needed to change the camera angles. I want to put a disclaimer out there. Uh, if you do open up a power supply, they are very, very dangerous. Uh, you need to make sure you know what you're doing. Now, I won't be responsible with shock or any injury because uh, you should do this at your own risk. Now the first thing I always do, and this is a safety, there should be a main uh, capacitor in the power supply, very large capacitor. In this case it's quite easy to identify, it's this one here. But you might be able to see down here under that Sam, Samsung, it says 450 volts. See if I need to discharge this. You will need to discharge the capacitor, that is what is the main danger of giving you a shock. So if I just put this on uh, DC, so you can see there, and if I connect the two leads. So this has been unplugged for a little while and it wasn't connected for long, so uh, capacitor has already been discharged, so we know that this is quite safe. It is a little bit of a dirty power supply. But everything appears to be okay. I'm just going to desolder the main capacitor and test the readings and see what we get because I think that is the main problem. Once I've done that I'll get back to you. Right I just wanted to show you something that I, the, the way that I tried to get, because this is quite a big capacitor it is quite difficult to get out. I have removed most of the solder but not all of it. I, d I only have this solder sucker which is not that brilliant with I don't necessarily recommend this but because I've only got this solder sucker remember you you need to discharge this capacitor first otherwise you will get a shock so I've discharged it so it's okay but taking some small pliers here and I'm, I'm grabbing the 
one of the legs. Same time, I'm holding the solder iron to the other side. Uh, I'm not sorry, I'm not doing that very well. Uh, while I'm doing that, there we go. Oh, I've pulled the trace off. Uh, do not pull the trace off. I did actually want to cut this out because that was quite embarrassing. Uh, I've pulled the trace off of the board. I don't know if you can see that there. That technique I used, as I said before, I don't recommend this, but I couldn't get all the solder off on the other side. I, I've gotten away with it before, but this time I haven't. But I think this is quite useful to show you why you shouldn't use this technique. So if, if you are removing, especially a large capacitor like this, you should try and remove all of the solder from the bottom points here. After you've removed all the solder from that side, the capacitor is loose, then, then you can take it out. You shouldn't do what I just did, but I will try to patch that up. Okay, so we've now removed this capacitor from the board eventually. This particular capacitor is 450 volts. As I said, that's very dangerous because if, even when it's discharged, switch the power supply off, it's still going to hold quite a high voltage, uh, enough to give you a shock. So to discharge it, you can put a pair of pliers against both uh, test leads like that. The way I do it is I, I mesh the capacitor first and then I, I discharge it 10 seconds, 20 seconds, however long it takes to discharge. And then I measure the capacitor again, DC mode here, and then you'll know this is discharged and this is safe because if I put uh, both test leads to the points, you'll see 50 uh, millivolts, so you know that's safe. Now, the way to test capacitors you really need two pieces of equipment. In, in my case, I think on the cheaper multimeters you don't usually have a capacitance, but on, on this particular multimeter I do have some way to measure the capacitance, which is measured in microfarads. You can see on this particular capacitor it's marked 82 microfarads. You can see the little U, U, F, or uh, MF, and if you have a look on this multimeter, you can see also that it does have a, a number of different readings. Now, on this particular multimeter, I have to change the test leads to uh, use that function. And on the, in this case, because I've got 82 microfarads, it's going to be in this range, the 400 microfarads range. So I'll put it on to 400 microfarads. You'll have to read the manual, but in my case, I need to put the red lead on the COM uh, input and the black lead on this input here. You can see it's got the symbol for capacitor on both of those, and it's got a minus there, which means that, that that's the ground lead, and then I have to put the COM on, on this one. So this is now ready to measure the capacitance of this, and usually it should be within 10% uh, of the value. Now, as you can see here, this capacitor is completely empty. I think this capacitor is dead. That is one way of measuring the capacitor. So if I did measure this capacitor within 10% of 82 microfarads, that doesn't necessarily mean it's, it's fully working because I have had a power supply where the microfarad reading has been fine. You might have seen some people on YouTube use piece of equipment is really really useful. And what you do, you power this on, uh, I think you press the zero button and I'll just push that again and then you short the test leads okay and then you undo them and then when I connect one it doesn't matter which way you do this I don't think. If I put one side on one lead and the other side on the other you should get, in this case, it says 28 ohms. So you, you'll definitely know that this, this is not a correct reading. Uh, in most cases, it should be less than an ohm, like 0.5 ohms, or th there is a chart here that will show you. It won't always have the exact reading for your particular capacitor. For example, like on this one, 
we've got 100 microfarads, so we'll take that as guide because it's quite close to 100. This particular one is 450 volts, which is not on this chart, it's off this chart, but the, the reading for 250 volts at 100 microfarads is 0 0.8 ohms. So you, you'd expect that to, to be around 1 ohm, some, something like that. Probably not more than 2 ohms. If we double that value, you'll get 1.6 ohms, something like that. You, you have to use a bit of estimate, but uh, definitely uh, 28 ohms means that this uh, capacitor is definitely gone. I do have some replacement capacitors, and I've got a bunch of them here. Uh, I ordered them and they came this morning. If you are buying replacement capacitors, you should buy uh, good quality ones. I'll show you the receipt here. Yeah. Chemicon, they're, they're made in Japan. I think they're, I'm not sure if they're lower at ESR, but they have 105 Celsius. They're rated at 105 degrees, so they can withstand that heat. And so in theory, this is working. If I connect one of the leads to one side, another to the other side, you can see here, I've got a good reading, which means it has a very low resistance, and that is what it should read. You should always have uh, both of these, these pieces of equipment. You need one ESR meter, and you need uh, a multimeter with capacitance. So if I just measure the capacitance on this, it should read around 82 microfarads. It doesn't have to be exact, but it should be around that. And if I just put those, put this uh, over there, and I've got one test lead on that side and the other on the other side. That's quite a bit out. It's probably, but it's under 10%. So just remember, you shouldn't expect to get the exact reading, but it should be within 10%. Uh, this is under 100 microfarads, so if it was reading 72, that means it's within the 10% range, which means this capacitor is good. So I'm going to replace this bad capacitor with this good capacitor. Now, this capacitor is slightly longer. Always remember, if you are buying a replacement capacitor, make sure you check the diameter and the length and that it will fit. And because in, in this case, if you look at the clearance, there's not much clearance between these two heat sinks. It, in fact, it just about fits in. You can see there, it only just fits in. I think the diameter of this particular capacitor is 16 millimeters. It is better to try and get the exact same diameter in this particular case where you don't have a lot of clearance. Now, even though this is a little bit longer, there should be enough uh, space. Now, I do, I do remember before I did destroy that trace. I need to rewire that trace. I think the trace is connected to this side of this capacitor, but I have to double check that with another power supply. Fix that stupid mistake I made, and I'll get back to you when that's sorted. So we're back again. Yeah, as you can see, um, I've soldered the new capacitor into the power supply. Even though this capacitor is a little bit longer, it, it does have enough clearance that it's not sticking out the end, so it should fit fine. If you are trying to remove a large capacitor, you should not do what I just did, uh, even though I did do it, because I, I wasted about 15 minutes trying to solder this connector here. The trace was completely destroyed, so I did put the trace back, but as you, you might be able to see there, that the positive side of this capacitor, this is the negative side, uh, just to um, uh, I, th I think it does show you, if you can see over here, uh, there is a symbol here, the, a minus symbol, uh, so you'll know that the minus side of the capacitor, or the ground side, is, is on this side. The negative test lead here is connected to uh, this heat sink here, so you, you know that is ground, that's the negative end. And on the positive end, which is where I you know, I pulled off that trace because I I used this solder sucker trying to remove a very large component like this. Often these solder suckers won't be enough to pull out 
uh, the solder can get away with it but in my case I I had to spend about 15 minutes trying to bridge the positive side of this capacitor with the this capacitor here you can see it's connected to there um, this is properly soldered back first I'm going to take the voltage reading and see if it's any different I'll just put this back in the casing uh, the casings here and I'll get back to you then when it's all connected. Okay, we're back again, and I've got the I, I've put the casing back on the power supply. I've got this plugged into the mains now, and I'm just going to do a quick uh, voltage reading on the DC output uh, here, and let's see if we get a different reading from before. 11.97. That seems like a good reading, but. Uh, before it wasn't working so what I'm going to do now is just plug this back into the Xbox change the camera view so you can see that and then we'll see if this replacing that capacitor that was faulty did anything maybe it didn't we'll find out okay we're back again um, I've reconnected the power supply to the main system board you've got the DC uh, input here and this is connected to mains and uh, I'm just going to switch this Xbox on and see if we get any response. Okay, we've got a beep and a light. We've got a fan spin. Looks like it's working. I'll just switch the monitor over to the Xbox. Uh, you should be able to see HDMI is not connected. You should be able to see that, okay, we've got Xbox One. Okay, Xbox is booted up and we're back on the start menu and just power this off. That's a successful repair. I hope this video was useful. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. Uh, thank you.